to say. Joining us now is Ken Gianella, who's the CFO of Alster. Thank you so much for your time today, Ken. So you're in the business of LiDAR sensors. Um, I just wanted to get a sense of, uh, pardon the pun, uh, exactly what that means. I mean, we had some pictures up just before we went to the break. So I'm thinking, you know, things like your iPhone, um, of course, those boxes on wheels, which you see delivering your food on the back of your car, etc. Just give us a sense of what you're in the business of. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having us today, Sam. We appreciate it. Uh, you know, Alster, it's the leader in perception and sensing globally. Um, we have over a thousand customers globally that we serve predominantly in four main industries, uh, industrials, uh, smart infrastructure, uh, uh, robotics, and automotive. And when you look across these sectors, uh, as you saw on the, the, the screen, many of our customers are solving real world everyday problems. And what we see ourselves is at the nexus of this physical AI revolution that's going on. And if you look at the future and everything that's gonna happen is anything that moves is going to need our help in a physical AI world because we're at the center of perception and sensing, which is a combination of a sensor like LiDAR or cameras combined with software and compute power in order to make these operations move in real time. I imagine you can be very, very busy right now uh, with uh, all of your business because of the fact that this is just gaining so much traction in the market at the moment. And look, your stock is being rewarded. I mean, you're up almost 100 percent or so year to date. Uh, it's sitting up about eight and a half percent right now. Uh, so you're obviously doing something right. Let's dig into these earnings. You reported uh, about a month ago or so now. But um, let's just talk about that quarter because uh, you did see uh, $39.5 million in revenue, which marked a 41 percent year over year increase. 13% uh, sequentially. What drove that? Well, it, it, by and far, it's our customer base. You know, we're blessed that we have great customers across all four verticals. And, you know, we're a lot of people within this industry, they have a very niche approach to it. They focus just on automotive and that's it. We had a founding principle 10 years ago that gave us the ability to play across all these markets. And what we saw is an unbelievably strong quarter with record deliveries, over 7,200 units delivered to our end customers. You know, we're gaining scale on our operations and we see an unbelievably strong pipeline and visibility with our customers across these verticals. And what that's really a sign of is not just Alster's success, but it's the success of our customers. That means that our customer base is having the ability to live, deliver outcomes and solutions into the real world to solve real world problems. So it's, it's a great proof point for where Alster and where physical AI is today. Where are you seeing the biggest demand right now? I mean, across uh, robotics, industrial verticals, I mean, as you say, infrastructure as well. I mean, where are you seeing the opportunity to scale the most? Well, you're asking me to pick my favorite child, aren't you, Sam? So when you look at all the verticals, we're seeing growth across all of them. But, uh, you know, we have a lot of opportunity and we're really big on smart infrastructure. And that's where we saw the largest growth uh, of all of the verticals last quarter. You know, when you look at smart infrastructure, that includes things like warehousing and logistics, um, street lights or uh, managing smart cities and smart uh, infrastructure. Um, we, we see a lot of promise there. And, and that's mainly because we have an end to end solution in that sector. Combined with our hardware and our software platform, we also have applications that we offer. Our Gemini Smart AI program that helps with identification of objects, along with our Blue City application, which helps control and manage smart infrastructure for cities. Um, the next vertical I'd really look at and we're super excited about is industrials. We think there is a big brownfield there of industrial automation that is going to need smart sensing um, and LiDAR to come help them grow and, and get even more um, productive than what they are doing today. And then, you know, you can't leave out the, the robotics industry. A lot of great things going on there with drones and other elements that are coming along. Um, and then automotive, you know, we, we look at automotive, it's a big play. We have great partners such as May Mobility and Motional there with the robo taxis. I think everyone knows about that. But if you separate automotive aside and, and get out of the hype with that and focus on these three other verticals, the growth is immense there. It's unbelievable the things in the real world problems that our partners are solving across robotics, industrials and uh, smart infrastructure.
So there's a lot of demand, there's a lot of opportunities out there, and uh, that's perhaps why you're not the only one in the business uh, doing it. So I'm just wondering, you know, as you look across the space, I know that one of your rivals is Hesai, or Hesai, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. They actually have a bigger market cap than you at $2.98 billion compared to your $1.4. But what is your competitive edge in this business? Well, I think it's number one, we're the largest Western LiDAR company in the world around. Um, we have a bigger uh, market in non-ADOS. Sai has a lot within the ADOS and the automotive space. But if you separate that ADOS, we are the global leader in all those other segments, even higher than uh, Asai uh, is operating. They're a Chinese-based company, so it helps us specifically in the Western markets um, when people are looking for solutions to choose because you know, we kind of bring a, a comfort when you're dealing with robotics, industrials, smart infrastructure to use a Western U.S.-based company in those types of scenarios. Okay, yes, I just see it is a Chinese company, so I perhaps uh, did pronounce it correctly at Hursai. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, as far as your exposure internationally, I see that you do um, have customers that you are working with in places like uh, South Korea, I noticed in your notes. Uh, can you sort of talk about your more global footprint outside of the U.S.? Yeah, and, and the U.S. is a big market for us, but we have a very strong presence in Europe and, and the rest of Asia. Um, you know, we have deployments in Singapore, Australia, uh, South Korea, um, but really, we're really proud of our European deployments. You know, we're all over Germany, France, uh, the UK, Eastern Europe. Uh, we have a really strong footprint there. Um, and, and really what's driving that is really around the industrials uh, and the robotics sector, uh, as well as uh, some smart infrastructure projects. Okay. It's been an absolute pleasure today, Ken. Thank you so much for joining us and getting us across the, the business and the quarter. Ken Gianella, who's the CFO of Alster there. Appreciate your time. We'll do it again.